All right, hey, welcome back. Let's talk about something really easy today that can spruce up your rhythm playing when you're just kind of vamping or jamming on one chord. Let's say the band is kind of playing an A minor or an A minor seven, any kind of variety you want, right? Now, A minor is the relative minor to C major, and that tells me that I can use any of the notes in the C major scale to approach that A minor in a really fun fashion. And I could do that by maybe playing just two notes which are major and minor thirds. So maybe I'll do something like C and E, because that kind of outlines a C chord, and play a scale. And I'm running out of real estate getting kind of high up there. Let's go backwards. So what we're doing is we're substituting notes from the C major or A minor scale. Remember, those are one and the same, um, depending on where you start. A minor is the relative minor of C. And we can do that when the band's just kind of playing, just kind of playing over that A minor chord. And maybe we don't want to do that for five minutes. Maybe we want to play something like this. We can do that all while the band is riding that A minor chord. That's what I'm going to do in the performance. But what I'll do is I'll kind of I'll tab out a little scale in major and minor thirds, which would be like an A minor scale, and you can use any of those. Now, some of them are going to sound better over that A minor chord than others, um, and I'll explain all that in the lesson portion. But you always want to sort of make that A minor and those chord tones your landing spot. But you can approach it from anywhere. It's good enough for Lindsey Buckingham for us. All right, let's jam a little bit and then we'll talk about what we can do with this and make it our own. Let's check out the jam. All right, so we're gonna jump into that with really just using major and minor thirds kind of outlining an A natural minor scale. And we can do that here with just an A and a C. Sometimes when you're using a maple neck, you get a little glare here, but I think we'll be all right. A and C up a whole step to B and D because the next chord is B diminished or B minor seven flat five if you expand it. Then a C, so that's C and E, major third there. Next chord's D minor, D and F. E minor, E and G, F and A, G and B, and then you're back to your root. Now, what I want you to think about is that's an A minor, A natural minor scale, but you could also think about it as a C major scale. And I'll tab this out for you so you have the fingerings. It's important to think about the guitar in that way and just put it in the back of your mind if it's a little foreign to you. You'll get it for sure. But we want to make music first, okay? So let's play an A minor chord. And let's go up three fingerings or three sets of minor and major thirds. Minor third, up a whole step, and then up a half step there to the C and E. Let's just play around with that. Mm -hmm. 
So you could play. I love doing that stuff, right? Very keyboard-esque. Now you can do some other things like maybe start from there. And the reason that's cool is because what you're getting is a C and an E. And that's the minor third and the fifth of an A minor chord. So those notes, you can play the open A right below it, and you can hear how it works. Now I could go further, E and G, that gives me the fifth and the flat seven of an A minor seven. So there's all these wonderful answers there. Now what about these notes, D and F? Now that gets you into a little bit more interesting colors where you have more of an 11 sound, or you have an A minor sharp five, you could technically say. But it's a great passing thing. See, beautiful stuff, just right in the scale, all over A minor. Now there's a little G fingering right there that's gonna give me a flat seven and a nine, let's say. And you're going, ah, it sounds like John Mayer already. Well, yeah, he goes. I was just playing this guitar. I figured, why not? It inspired me to do the lesson. So when somebody says, let's play an A minor, you go, sure. They're doing that. Now you go. Haven't played a lick yet. Really, really cool stuff. Let's hear it with the track and play around a little bit. One chord, A minor. Normal tempo. Start right on the root. Move it up. Badass. Create your own guitar part. Yeah. When you're doing this kind of thing, let's slow it down a little bit. Yeah. And let's start on that C and E. Let's go up a whole step, D minor. Now you can start to use it for lead ideas. Let's do a little better than that. Maybe put a pentatonic lick. tricky to play that because, well, it can be tricky to play it, but it's not that tricky to understand because it's just two notes. As long as you're in that scale, you can experiment and there's no wrong answers. It's only what your ear tells you. All right, cool. So I'm going to tab that out. You guys will get the track. It's just one chord, but it's a lot of fun to play over. It's pretty dark and moody. It's also great if you want to jam in A minor or uh, A minor pentatonic or anything you can come up with. So we're going to transition from here. Let's just talk a little bit about Silver Sky, Clean Boost, uh, and I'll give you sort of my thoughts, even though I've done stuff on this before. Everybody likes to talk here. We'll have some fun. All right, I'll see you in the next little spot. Here we are. I just want to talk a little bit about how I utilize a guitar like this. Now, I don't play, you know, th three single coil guitars very much. Look, Strat style guitars. Okay, I'll say it. Uh, and, but this one I, I think is cool because it, it's more of a 50s sound to me, even though I think it's more based on John's 60, a 60s um, Strat. It just sounds a little a little brighter, a little thinner to me. Um, and I could be on a desert island with a guitar like this for sure. Um, but what I need is I need some power and I need some oomph behind it because single coils are just, they don't have the output of humbuckers, obviously, okay? But let's talk about, you know, in that segment, what I was doing, I was going to the, what I call the four position here, neck and middle. 
And that has a certain place and it's attractive in a mix because it's not as aggressive sounding and it really fits in well. So when we're going. Or when you have your Hendrix kind of. That's to me immediately what I hear. If a pickup combination does the four position well on a Strat style guitar, then I'm all in. And what's great is once you do go to the fifth position, now you're in more of your Stevie Ray kind of clapping. All I'm using is my Tim Pierce uh, pedal with the clean boost side into my two rock TS1 ox box. That's kind of the normal, normal thing. But I like to live in four and five there when I play these kinds of guitars. Now you're probably saying, well, what could I use the third position for? I almost hear hardly anybody ever use the third position. Third position is great for slide. Bonnie Raitt uses that a lot. Um, and great just kind of rhythm. Then don't be afraid to go to your neck position. You know. Number four, you start to kind of find your way with a Strat style guitar in the pickup selector. Now when you go to the number two position, everybody talks about the quack, right? Because You hear a lot of the funk players, old and new, kind of live in that area. Thin, really cuts. And then I love, you know, the modern players like, um, you know, Wayne Krantz and people love that. Just has a unique sound all its own. And of course, Mark Knopfler. Now, everybody neglects the bridge position on a Strat style guitar, but really, gets you out of a pickle in a, in a, in a hot minute when you need a, a twangy type of sound, but also, with some gain as well but you get yourself familiar with that switch and know that you can get power in the neck more twang in the bridge middle position can get a little funky if you don't hit it right but then you'll find your way if this is your only guitar you'd be surprised how you really get to know uh, a strat style guitar now i floated the tremolo ever so slightly on this uh, and it's it's working out great for me and the tuning seems really really nice as well so I just feel like if a guitar has a tremolo, I gotta use it, because I really love it. Um, fun guitar, great color, I've uh, had it for a while now, and I use it on a lot of more session work than I do live, but occasionally I'll, I'll bring it out if the, uh, if the gig calls for it. Uh, but yeah, PRS Silver Sky, we know this is John Mayer's guitar. I think it's a great value for what it is, um, I, and of course, they're everywhere, but if you need a link, I threw one below as well, as well to the, a lot of the gear that I use in these videos, so check those out as well, and of course, get the tab in the track. All right, Corey here signing off. We got to work on a really cool idea in this video, two note rhythm parts. I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of it. Make sure you jump on it. Make sure you get your hands wrapped around it. And uh, I'll see you on the next lesson. Take care.